I had a man saying recently that Titan is not about you. It's about your great, 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 great grandchildren. I said, how does that bother you as a preacher? Am I your family? Leave me. You go and pay the tithe. Leave the rest of us who don't want to pay it. Is it not us that will not be blessed? You have discovered that Titan is about being blessed. How come is the people who are collecting Titan that are fighting for it? It's about money. There is just no two way about it. And it's fraudulent. It's fraudulent. It's wickedness. People are just manipulating scriptures to deceive people. It is impossible to tithe. Those who are in Christ Jesus, they gave. Look at the early church. They sold their land and brought to the apostles' feet. The apostles didn't lack and they didn't preach tithe. Somebody again said, eh, the apostles, they were not pastors. So when did you hear the pastor should collect tithe? They're just looking for any way to retain this money. Because you know why? The reason many people are doing church is tithing. That's just the truth. It is tithing. They've calculated it. Once the number is increasing, they know they are in money. So to defeat that today, they can't stand it anymore. Otherwise, why are you fighting for money? And these people are not preaching the real gospel. They will always say, we can't go into it now. Why, why a, 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 a subject as serious as that, why will you say you can't go into it? Why can't you take a week to, to teach your congregation the counsel, the total counsel of God about tithing, the total counsel of God about giving? Why will you not do that? That is your calling as a preacher. What then are you preaching if you don't have time to explain something like that? You just want to tell them, just do it. Somebody said it's about, it's about your life. If you don't tithe, you will die. I say, huh? It has become that bad. So, okay, if it is me that we die, when did you suddenly love me so much? The same you that you cannot use your wealth to help me. You can't use your wealth to distribute like the apostles did. You are not the one telling me that you love me. You don't want me to die. So I should bring tithing. So we are using money to buy life. Those who are saying this are wicked men that are misrepresenting God. It is lie. It is fraud. We say this thing with every sense of responsibility. Anybody see, I, I am not going by the grace of God in good conscience, be saying things that I know the scripture is saying people should do, and I will now be saying people should not do. Who am I? Do I want to kill myself? That is why we are very serious about this matter. That it is a lie, it is fraud. It does not matter who is doing it. It is fraud. If you are doing it in ignorance, repent. It is fraud. You are deceiving God's people. It just shows that you've never taught people the gospel. And you probably don't know what the gospel is. We have been called to liberty. You are no longer under anything that is telling you that you must do something. You must give something. You know, this thing is so bad that one of these false preachers was saying recently that if you give to the poor, what you will receive is... is, is um, uh, is what you give. But if you give to a man that is blessed, and in these people's mind, in their wicked mind, blessed man means a man that has money. Period. Period. It's as simple as that. In their, That is what they have in their mind. So if you give to a man that is blessed, he lifts you up. Who told you I want to be lifted? Who told you I'm not happy? The people that, that sold their land and gave to the apostles, did they become millionaires because they did that? So Peter that, has, that had no silver and gold, they sold their land and brought to his feet. But you say we must give to a man that is blessed. And that's a man that has money in your own definition for them to be lifted. It's because we don't still know that our calling is according to his purpose. We are already in the kingdom of God. There is no poor person in the kingdom. Jesus clearly defined this in Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to read it again today. Let me read that in Revelation chapter 2. Because I can't understand how you call yourself a servant of God and you are you cannot you call yourself a servant of God and you are going against that God. I don't understand it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? This is Jesus. I want to see how they will fought this. This is Jesus. This thing says the first and the last. Who was dead and come to a life? Verse 9. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty. This is Jesus saying he knows our poverty. 
I thought the next message would be seven keys to financial prosperity. Seven keys to being lifted up. Prophet offering, uh, sacrificial seed, uh, tithing. I thought that was what Jesus was saying. Because this is what these first teachers are saying. Look at what Jesus said. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. There is no poor person in the kingdom of God. You can't have Jesus and be poor. It is wickedness for you to call a child of God poor. How can I carry the Holy Spirit, the creator of the heaven and the earth, inside of me? And then you say I'm poor. In what way am I poor? Who told you that paper makes me rich? One of them, it, it's so bad that he was even saying the name of Jesus must be lifted by money. It is, is that bad? See, we need to actually pray for these brethren. I'm telling you, they have been corrupted and blinded by the God of Mammon. This thing is not ordinary. This is a clear attack of the kingdom of darkness on their heart because they love money. Nothing to preach anymore. It's just about giving, giving. Are you hungry? I don't understand it. Are you hungry? Jesus said, but you are rich. What does that mean? Jesus is saying, what you call poverty, I know it. But in my own perspective, you are not poor, you are rich. Another church that says, I, I am rich, the church in Laodicea, they say I'm rich, I have everything, I don't need anything. Jesus came, do you know what Jesus said to them? He said, you are poor, you are blind, you are miserable. How can you say you are servant of God today and then you are now using the same parameter Jesus condemned to be what you are judging, who is rich and who is poor? I am not poor, brethren. I may not have a penny in my pocket, but I am not poor. At least the fact that I'm speaking now shows that I'm, I'm alive. For me to be alive, I must have eaten. I must have drank water. So God is sustaining me. God is sustaining me. In this kingdom, we can abound. We, we learn how to, to abase and abound. And, it makes, it, and there is no problem with that. There's no problem. It's not a problem. I'm used to not having money. And it's not a big deal. It's not a problem, sincerely. I'm used to it. Because ultimately, I discovered that things that really need to get done, they get done. And is that not what life is all about? I have food to eat, ultimately. So what is it at, at the end of the day? I have a place to sleep. So what is my problem? He said, do not worry about tomorrow. <laughs> so Galatians, 5.13 says, we have been called to liberty, but we should not use our liberty to sin. 